Honestly, that's about how I expected last night's game to go. And uh, if you thought any different, then I may have a bridge to sell you. Your Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get things started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms, over on YouTube and on Sirius XM. I also have to let you know that this episode is brought to you by iGameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. We have to talk about last night's game. Uh, unfortunately, I know I don't want to do it either, but um, frankly, like I said at the at the top of the show, this is about what I expected. So we'll talk a little bit about the game. We'll talk about tonight's game against Vegas and uh, playoffs are starting soon for every league that isn't the NHL. The Blue Jackets are uh, pretty, pretty well represented. So we're going to take a look at some WHL, some OHL, some CHL, some uh, QMJHL. Some NCAA, USHL, and BCHL playoffs. Um, and then probably in tomorrow's episode, we'll take a look at some of the European prospects. Uh, these are just the seven that I picked out first, I think, seven or eight. Um, but let's talk about last night's game, because like I said, it went about how I expected. I didn't expect them to let the Colorado Avalanche have 51 shots on goal, which um, if, you're tra- if you're keeping track, that is more than double the amount that the Blue Jackets managed. Um, What are we doing? Like, I'm not surprised uh, the Avalanche have won, had won seven in a row going into that game. Nathan McKinnon is uh, terrifying and inevitable. Um, I think Nathan McKinnon is one of the few players that, like, if I see him with the puck on his way into the offensive zone, I'm like, oh, here comes a goal. You know, it's very similar. Like, I I don't do it with a lot of players, but uh, Conor McDavid, is another one. Um, McKinnon's kind of more terrifying, though, because he does just kind of thunder down the wing like a runaway train. Um, and when I watched the Avalanche play in San Jose this year, I did spend a lot of the game just going, uh-oh, every time McKinnon had the puck. So, like, unsurprised. Uh, pleasantly surprised that they took it took him three per- the, until the third period to, uh, to register a point. He had... A 16-game point streak and a home game point streak of 32 games. Uh, And it took him 40 40 minutes, uh, 46 minutes and one second to get on the score sheet. And then on the score sheet, he did get goal and assist in that third period. The Colorado Avalanche win 6-1. And the Blue Jackets just didn't, didn't have an answer for basically anyone. Um... Makar, again, inevitable. Mika Rantanen uh, might be the most underrated player on the Avalanche, which sounds stupid considering he has uh, a bajillion points this season. But, man, what a great player. Um, that top line of, of McKinnon, Rantanen, and literally whoever else they choose to put there, uh, looks like it was Druan um, in, in this game. Insane. Again, I, I I feel bad being like, wow, they're so underrated because they won a cup like, what, two seasons ago? Um, but I feel like McKinnon rightfully getting his flowers this season, he's probably going to win the heart. Um, and, you know, you can debate whether or not you think that's a good thing or a bad thing or whether it was deserved or what. But what a great player. Rantanen, kind of the other guy on that line right now, which feels insane to have Mika Rantanen as your other guy. But even the other lines, Russ Colton scored a goal. Valerian Nichushkin scored a goal. Like, they let Miles Wood, Zach Preze, and Casey Middlestat also get assists. Josh Manson had a point in this game. Like, it's not even that it was just that top line doing top line things, um, but it was that everyone showed up. The power play showed up. They scored once on their three attempts. The Blue Jackets didn't get 
a power play in this game, which I didn't realize until I was looking at the stats after the game. I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's right. Um, the Blue Jackets took three penalties. Technically, Mathieu Olivier took a penalty, but it was a fighting major, and so like that doesn't count in terms of power plays, obviously. Um, but yeah, there were only three minor penalties handed out all game, and all of them were to the Avalanche. So... On the on one hand, frustrating. On the other hand, do I trust this team to score on the man advantage? No. So I'm not going to point at that as like a hey, this is this is a reason they lost because they didn't get a power play. Because if they had the power play, would they have scored? Probably not. Uh, I am going to point at the fact that they got outshot 14 to five, 22 to seven in the first two periods, and then they kind of almost showed up in the third period. They only got outshot 15 to 12. But again. That still comes out as 51 to 24 in in just shots. Like, I've seen games this season where, the, where teams haven't had that many shot attempts. And now this, where the Blue Jackets are... Um, let me pull up how many shot attempts the Avalanche had. Uh, because they had 90. They had 90 shot attempts in this game. Uh, and converted 51 of those to actual shots. Um, it looks like 27 of them were blocked, if I'm reading this rightly. Um, 25 high danger shot attempts to seven from the Blue Jackets. Like, they just... Part, part of me is is frustrated, and part of me is like, okay, well, like, this is exactly how I expected the game to go. Like, you can't get mad at losing to a team like the Avalanche, I feel like, because... They just, they are who they are, and it's always going to be like this. Um, and at least they didn't do it on the global stage like they did last season when they were in Tampere. So it could be a lot worse, frankly. Um, in terms of players that did well in this game, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the answer to that. Um, the Nylander, Jenna, uh, Gaudreau line continues to to do some fun good things um they were near the top in terms of shot attempts for but they also got you know beaten up on shot attempts against um the only player to not allow more shot attempts than shot attempts for was Carson Meyer who had who was on the ice for nine attempts for and nine against um again the avalanche they're inevitable uh Damon Severson was fine uh I believe was second on the defense, uh, second on the team in shot on being on the ice for shot attempts for, but also was on the ice for thirty shot attempts against. Similarly, uh, Wierenski, twenty four shot attempts for, thirty one against, um, on the ice for almost two expected goals against, uh, was only on the ice for two goals against. Uh, actually, um, so like this wasn't even a case of like, oh, this is a line that had a bad night. Um, like there was a a, a game. A couple of games ago, I can't remember which one it was off the top of my head because there's been so many bad games. Um, Zach Wensky was on the ice for, I think, three or four goals against. Um, and, you know, some lines were, were fine. Some lines were good and some lines were very not. Uh, everyone was equally bad in this, it seems. Um, the only players that were not on the ice for a goal against uh, at five on five, anyway, uh, is the future... Vix Wolanski Vronkov line, which I did not see coming. Um, they got out attempted pretty heavily um in their five on five minutes, but hey, they don't ask how, etc. Um, so good good job to those guys. Um they didn't create a ton, but they also didn't give a ton up. And frankly, at this point in the game, I'll take that. You know, um, I did not have the Vronkov Fix Wolanski Pucci line being the most de effective defensively, but I guess that's where we are. Um, they, like I said, they didn't create a lot. They only collectively created uh, 0.28 goals for, um, expected goals for, excuse me. But they also only allowed an expected goals against of 0.18. So they were, I believe, the only line that created more than they allowed, which is pretty impressive um that marcheco selja taxier line not great uh extremely not good in fact but again 
I'm just kind of picking at things here because it's it's what what can you do like how do you break down that game and be like okay this is where they went wrong this is what they did badly because at the end of the day the abs are in full like playoff form already they've got i believe basically their entire roster healthy um minus Gabe Landeskog who they haven't had for you know like the bulk of two full seasons now so he's not even really a you can't point to him being missing as a reason that the apps should like if the abs lose a game, they can't be like, oh, well, we haven't got our captain because he hasn't been there for two years. So, like, obviously, it does take an effect, but I'm not sitting here like, well, that's a big loss for the team, but they don't know when he'll be back, et cetera, et cetera. Like, they've, had, they've dealt with this for two years. He might not be coming back. Um, the Blue Jackets are still running a lineup of of children and AHLers, and also Johnny Gaudreau is there. So, disappointed, not surprised. Um, would I have been surprised if the Blue Jackets had somehow managed to get a win out of this? Sure, but they didn't, and so there's no point dwelling on it. So we're going to move on. We're going to talk about Vegas tonight, because that's maybe the worst the worst back-to-back in in the season is going to Colorado, playing the Avs, and then going to Vegas and playing the Golden Knights. So we're going to talk about that game in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I've got to tell you guys about Indeed. No matter how the last game went, any time you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. They are the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And it's the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't have to pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all, and that is Indeed. They partner with you on every step of the hiring process. They've got great time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match. They've got virtual interviews. And with Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you're going to get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. I have not had to job hunt in a little bit here, but Indeed is the only one I use when I'm job hunting, so I can understand why. It's the only job site that people use to hire because it's, quite frankly, the best one. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer is valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire. You need Indeed. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jackets. Let's talk about Vegas. Now, the last time these two teams faced off, uh, the Blue Jackets somehow came out on top. Do I know how? No, not at all. Uh, the Blue Jackets won 6-3 to three, uh, back in March in Nationwide. Um, if I remember rightly, that game was kind of a... Oh, that was the that was Nylander's, uh and it, uh, that was Nylander's hat trick night. Very good, um, but that was again a real example of the team playing above its means, which they did for like a little bit of that game, and then have done a couple of times since then. They beat um, they beat Edmonton as well very shortly after or before that. Um, however. That's a very different team than the one the Blue Chickens are going to be icing tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wierenski out tonight. Um, I think he struggled last night. I don't think he's 100%. They have an extra defenseman. Don't call David Juracek up just to sit him in the press box. I understand that that is why they called him up, because they just needed an extra guy just in case he couldn't go. But if he's not 100%, sit him for th- this game that means nothing. Honestly, um, Blue Jackets are going to probably use Tarasov tonight. He was he wasn't great against the Red Wings, but has been fantastic for the month of March thus far, uh, including this game against the the last game against Vegas, where he uh, allowed three goals on thirty nine shots for a nine twenty three save percentage. So I feel fine about that. Um, again, like, do I expect this game to happen? as that one did. No, no, not even almost. Uh, Honestly, my hope is that they get out of this without injury and without too much embarrassment is kind of, is kind of where I'm at right now. 
Um, Vegas is on a bit of a down, not a downslide, but they've been struggling the last little bit. They've only got four wins in their last 10 games. Um, and in that time, they've got losses to Columbus and Buffalo and Calgary in there. Um, they've beat Seattle twice. They beat Detroit and they beat New Jersey. Um, but they're looking again, they're looking kind of mortal here. So it genuinely wouldn't shock me if the Blue Jackets decided to come out and win this game. Um, Blue Jackets are on a three-game losing streak right now. As we know, there was the game against Winnipeg, which was, oh, maybe that was the game that Wierenski had, uh, that uh, Wierenski was was no good, very bad, horrible in it. Um, they lost to Detroit in overtime, and then they lost to Colorado just last night. So, like, again, am I expecting much? No. But Vegas is looking extremely human right now. Um, I'm not sure where they are in the standings, but I believe that they are in a wild card spot right now. Um, they're in the second wild card spot. They are four points clear of St. Louis, who has played an extra game. So at this point, I guess we're kind of hoping for St. Louis to overtake the Knights. Because uh, I do think it would be funny if the Golden Knights missed the playoffs. Um, I don't think they will, but I think it would be funny if they did. And the Blue Jackets can help out there. Uh, by uh, by beating them. Um, again, what am I expecting? Basically nothing. Um, and kind of, I feel bad that my expectations are this low, but also it's game, what, 71 of the season for the Blue Jackets. Um, they've lost 47 games of the 70 that they've played so far. Um, sitting at the bottom of the East again, they're probably going to be in with a chance of winning the lottery. I'm just, I'm ready for the season to be over, quite frankly. Um, can we just, like, forfeit the rest of the games? No. Um, will I Will I watch this game live? Probably not. Uh, I'll probably catch it in the morning when I wake up, and we'll we'll talk about the game um, in, in tomorrow's episode because we're going to do another bonus weekend episode for you. But, like, I'm looking at this game, and I'm trying desperately to, like, find something to be positive or excited about. Um and I'm just not seeing anything. The Vegas Golden Knights are really middle of the road in terms of like team stats, just on the NHL.com. Like they're 22nd in power play, 13th in penalty kill, 17th in faceoffs, 14th in goals for per game, and 11th in goals against per game. Um, again, they're missing some some big names. Uh, Mark Stone is uh, is gone for the season. Uh, someone else, I believe, is is on long term IR as well. Um, I don't know who it is off the top of my head, but um, I don't know, man. This game's going to suck, and I've just kind of made my peace with that. Uh, so we'll talk about it tomorrow, though. Maybe, maybe we'll maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. I feel like I feel like I expected the Blue Jackets to get embarrassed last game, and that they they shocked me by not doing that. The last game against the Vegas Golden Knights, I mean, not the last game in general. Um, but we'll talk about it in in tomorrow's game, and hopefully, it will be. If not a win, then at least less embarrassing than last night against the Avalanche. Um, in a minute, we're going to talk about some more fun things. Uh, there are a bunch of Blue Jackets prospects that are going to be playing in the playoffs uh, in their respective leagues. So I thought we would we would do a little bit a little roundup of the North American guys that are getting ready to make the playoffs. So we'll do that in just a second here at Locked Up Blue Jackets. First, I'm going to tell you guys about FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets, because FanDuel is going to let you bet on every single game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Literally, just go pick the heaviest favorite, um, as long as it's not like BYU, uh, and if it wins... You're going to win $200 that you can use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all for legal reasons. Uh, I am picking the Illini uh, to win it all um, because that's my father-in-law's alumnus. He, he is an alumni of uh, of uh, Illinois, so that's who I'm going to go with. And uh, I can do that at fanduel.com slash locked on. And I'm going to bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Okay, welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. Let's talk playoffs, which I don't, I know sounds stupid here at Locked On Blue Jackets. We haven't talked about playoffs in, I think, 
literally since I started this podcast back in August of 2020. So let's just do a rapid fire run through. Um, we're going to talk about the OHL, the WHL, uh, the QMJHL, the NCAA, the BCHL, and the USHL here. And then um, tomorrow I'll take a look at some of our European prospects and how they're doing and what's going on there. Um, OHL, the obvious one, Luca Pinelli for the Ottawa 67s. Uh, he's on a quest to get 50 goals this season, and he is currently at 48 of them with, I believe, two games left. So he needs a goal in each game to be in with a chat to, to hit that 50 goal mark. And I say he does it. Um, he's currently leading all Blue Jackets prospects, regardless of league, with 81 points in his 67 games. And the Ottawa 67s are currently sixth in the Eastern Conference of the OHL with 80 points. They've clinched their playoff spot. Um, and I believe will be playing the Mississauga Steelheads in their first matchup as it stands right now. Um, the other player in the OHL that the Blue Jackets have in the system right now is a new guy, is Max McHugh. He's got 60 points in 61 games uh, as a center. He was a, a free agent signing couple of weeks ago the London Knights are at the top of the Western Conference they've got 102 points uh which I believe is is good for best in the OHL um so they are probably going to face off against the Flint Firebirds uh, again this is all kind of looking at the standings right now this is obviously you know things are subject to change um but London Knights sitting at the top sitting pretty at the top of their division with four points clear of second place in the league and second place in their division uh, the the Saginaw spirit. So again, look for Max McHugh to have a long playoff run unless terrible things happen, which, you know, we've seen before. But the Blue Jackets have two players in the OHL uh, currently going to the playoffs. I'm just scrolling down my list to make sure I haven't left anyone out. Oh, um, Nolan Lalonde in, in goaltending. I forgot to look at the goalie list. Uh, he's with the Saginaw spirit. So they are currently, he was traded from the Erie Otters earlier this season. Um, and he is, uh, Saginaw is currently second in the division. So he will also be there. He'll probably be facing, as of right now, the Owen Sound attack. Um, so three Blue Jackets in, in the OHL will be having playoff pushes. Let's move along to the WHL. Um, the Blue Jackets have uh, two players with the Moose Jaw Warriors in Denton Matejchuk and Martin Rashavi. Uh, Martin Rashavi is, uh, I believe, technically classed as an overager this season, um, but he's got 41 points in 62 games. He probably will be with the Monsters next season um, if the Blue Jackets decide to take him. And then Denta Matejchuk, 74 points in 51 games. He's the captain. He's having one of the best seasons a defenseman can have in the WHL. Um, and the uh, Bouchard Warriors are currently third in the conference. So probably, again, another deep-ish playoff run for them. But I am kind of hoping to see uh, Matejchuk, before the season ends, get him a couple of NHL games or some uh, AHL games. Quite frankly, the Monsters could use the bodies right now. So on one hand, I'm looking for him to have a deep playoff run. This is his last year in the WHL, and uh, he's the captain. So it would be great for him to do the James Malatesta thing and go out on a real high by uh, winning the whole dang thing. But also it will be very fun to see Matej Chuck in the NHL or the AHL to kind of finish off the season. Um, I believe there are only two WHL prospects. Um, again, just doing a quick scroll. Uh, yes. So we'll move on from the WHL to the QMJHL. And this one's interesting. Uh, the Blue Jackets have a couple of players in the queue, um, but at night, neither of them, as it stands right now, are uh, are available to play. Um, so Jordan Dumay is currently suspended. I believe he's going to be missing the at least the first game, of the QMJL play, QMJHL playoffs. Uh, the Halifax Mooseheads currently second in their division behind uh, Drakabe Como. Um, again, I'm looking for them to to have a run, uh, but he is not going to be playing for at least the first game on account of how he's suspended for, I believe, a DUI. So that's not great. He's also missed a chunk of the season due to injury. He had, I believe, hip surgery or abdominal. Uh, one of the reports was fake, and I can't remember which one it was. But he had surgery, um, just came back, and then immediately got suspended again, I believe. So he's out for 
the rest of the regular season and at least one playoff game. And then the other QMJHL prospect that the Blue Jackets have was traded from the Drummondville, uh, the Drummondville Volunteers to the uh, St. John Sea Dogs, uh, which is kind of a downgrade for him because Drummondville is at the top of the West and St. John is ninth in the East and is probably missing the playoffs. I'm not sure how many... Uh, teams make the playoffs in the QMJHL, but as of right now, he's on the outside looking in. Um, had a, a decent season here. Again, as a guy that was kind of a, a throwaway pick, um, 14 points in 37 games with Drummondville, and then 17 get points in 27 games with St. John. 31 points in 64 games overall is not bad for a seventh round draft pick. Um, interested to see what he does next season. More, more than this season, honestly. I'm excited to see what he does next season. Um, so that's all of the major junior. Let's take a quick look at the NCAA. Blue Jackets have two prospects, uh, I believe, in that. Uh, in Gavin Brindley, who's playing at the University of Michigan. And um, William Whitelaw, who's playing at the University of Wisconsin. Um, they also have uh, Guillaume Richard at Providence and Aiden Treshuk at Boston College. So Boston College is a, is a team to watch. Um, they are extremely top-heavy, um, so he could just kind of go along for the ride, but I'm most interested in looking at William Whitelaw, 17 points in 36 games uh, with Wisconsin as a freshman, and then uh, Wisconsin second in the Big Ten right now, so look for them to make the, uh, the, the final four if possible, and then Michigan also. Taking a step back this season, they're currently fourth in the uh, in the conference, and I believe actually their season is is done. If I'm not mistaken, they've played their 24 conference games, so they are, I believe, done. Uh, sitting again at fourth in the Big Ten, that's good to make the playoffs. We'll see. They're going to be placing off against Michigan State, which is going to be tough. Um, but again, Gavin Brindley, 51 points in 36 games, sixth le- uh, nationwide, somehow did not get nominated for the Hobie Baker, despite being named the Big Ten Player of the Year. Um, but look for Michigan to to do something in the playoffs, because they always do. Running a little bit long here, so we're going to hurry on over to the BCHL, which is like the precursor to the WHL. Um, the Blue Jackets have uh, James Fisher, former seventh-round pick, he is with the Penticton Vs this season. They have 81 points. They are, uh, I believe they've clinched the division. Yep, correct. Uh, and they will be playing the Prince George Spruce Kings in the first round if it stands, if the, the standings end as they are, which I imagine they will. I don't think Prince George is going to jump Cranbrook, Cranbrook, who is fully 10 points ahead. Uh, so look for, for James Fisher to get involved. Um, he is currently at 36 points in 51 games with Penticton, uh, and I believe he's going to college next year. So he'll be an interesting one to watch for sure. Yeah, he's he's uh, committed to Northeastern um, next year. So again, definitely a, a player to keep an eye on for the Blue Jackets. And we're going to finish off U- USHL. Uh, Andrew Strathman is with the uh, Youngstown Phantoms. He's suspended at the minute, and I don't know what for, and no one seems to really know what for. Um, I suspect it might have something to do with the fact that Youngstown has the most penalty minutes of any USHL team, but they're currently fourth in the standings, haven't clinched a playoff spot yet, it looks like. Uh, But if all six, I I believe six teams in each conference make it, so they will be playing, uh, if if it stands, they'll be playing the Muskegon Lumberjacks, who are the third seed. Andrew Strathman, the captain, is, uh, where is he? I have lost him. There he is. He's got 37 points in 55. Nope. 34 points in 41 games. Excuse me. And again, he's been suspended for at least a chunk of the season. So we'll see if he's available for playoffs. But that's just kind of my my little, little run of Blue Jackets prospects that aren't in the NHL or the AHL in North America that are going to be uh, doing some playoff stuff. Tomorrow, we'll take a quick look in at the um, European prospects, uh, the KHL, Finnish League. I believe we have a player in the Swiss Leagues as well, so we'll take a quick look at that tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode, for making it your first listen of the day every single day. I have been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the show at LO underscore Blue Jackets. If you want comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockdownbluejackets at gmail.com. 
Thank you for make, once again for making us your first listen. You can find us on any podcast app of choice. You can find us over on YouTube. You can find us on Sirius XM. Watch the game or listen to the game, rather, on Sirius XM. Bobby Gallagher does a great job with the radio broadcast for the Blue Jackets. So if you cannot get the Bally Sports guys, uh, then Bobby Gallagher is a perfect substitute. Enjoy the game tonight. I will enjoy it in the morning. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.